Hello, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Ron Burgers, and I'm a junior in the AIM program covering domestic industrials. Today, I will be covering MazTech, ticker MTZ. A little introduction. MazTech is an American infrastructure and engineering construction company. It operates through four segments, oil and gas, communication, power generation and industrial, and electrical transmission. The oil and gas segment provides oil and natural gas pipelines as well as processing facilities required. The communication segment conducts engineering, construction, and maintenance for wireless and fiber optic communication companies. The power generation and industrial segment works with the construction and the installation of parts required by power facilities, while the electrical transmission segment works with maintaining electric and utility facilities. You can see the revenues on the chart on the right. 97% of revenues is derived from the United States, with the remaining 3% from Canada. MassTech was founded in 1994 and went, later went public in 1998. It is currently headquartered in Florida. On to my recommendation. MassTech is one of the largest and most diversified infrastructure providers in the United States. They design, build, install, and maintain products for power and utility companies, as well as for the state and the federal government. They're responsible for building gas and oil pipelines, telephone and fiber optic towers, electric power plants, and more. Historically, MassTech has been able to lower the cost of revenue 1% each year, and the trend is expected to continue, further improving the margins. In March, the board authorized a share repurchase plan of up to $150 million. This repurchase announcement was in addition to a $129 million plan already established in 2019, and MassTech is currently proud to announce that during the first quarter of 2020, they have purchased up to $110 million of that plan. The drive to increase shareholder value, as well as the untapped potential in various markets thus far, present an opportune time to invest. It is recommended that MassTech be added to the AIM small cap fund with a price target of $47.84, representing a 53.1% upside. On to my first driver, 5G and fiber optics. The demand for the fiber expansion grew at the end of 2019 as all major wireless telephone carriers expressed the need to make the change to offer their own 5G network. In addition, MassTech already has a strong relationship with AT&T, which will, which will provide a future opportunity to draw revenues. MTZ anticipates strong demand in the third quarter of 2020 for fiber projects, not only for telephone companies, but as well as cable TV providers. AT&T plans to have nationwide 5G capabilities by the end of 2020, positioning revenues to increase $400 million by 2021. Second driver is revenues from clean energy. Large improvements include the power generation and industrial segments, which saw a 55% increase in revenue as it reached $1 billion in 2019. As the emphasis for renewable energy grows, the demand will rise, as evidenced by the backlog, of $1.3 billion, and a 90% increase from last year. MassTech expects this is collectible within the next 18 months, and sales to increase 25 to 30%, with an EBITDA margin increasing 2 to 5% in the coming quarters. My third and final driver, growth through acquisitions. MassTech completed six acquisitions in 2019, one in oil and gas, four in the communication segment, and one in the power generation and industrial segment. Most notably, the addition to the oil and gas segment will pro provided $135 million in revenue in 2019. MassTech's ability to generate positive returns from acquisitions ensures investors that this revenue will grow in the coming years. In total, the six acquisitions contributed $188 million in revenue in 2019. On to the valuation. A five-year discounted cash flow model was constructed using a growth rate of 1% and a WAC of 8.8%, and an intrinsic value of $52.14 was reached. Using a sensitivity analysis of 25 bips on the terminal rate and the WAC produced a range of $49.14 to $59.72. Additionally, a price-to-earnings model was created using a 2020 EPS of $5.10 and a PE multiple of $8.52. Uh, this, this led to a price target of $43.42.
Finally, an EV to EBITDA multiple was made. Using a multiple of 5.28, a price target of 47.84 was reached. Weighing the model 60-2020, the final target price is $47.84, representing a 53.09% upside. On to the mass tax risk. The, ind- the construction industry is fairly cyclical to the economic environment. Slowdowns in the real estate development or expansion and technology in the communication industry will impact revenues. If the infrastructure bill is not approved, NASDAQ may see a slowdown in contracts rates and overall production. Secondly, 39% of their revenues come from large clients. AT&T producing 20%, Equatrius Midstream Corporation producing 11%, and Energy Transfer Affiliates leading 8%. While these firms are in a good relationship and currently have projects active, a loss of one of these could be detrimental. And finally, the, the, the industry is highly regulated. The construction and engineering industry is highly regulated, and future regulations have the potential to stunt growth as customers will have to abide by the new ones. New regulation can also hurt current products and inflict new expenses onto NASA. Management. Jose Moss is the CEO of NASDAQ and has been CEO since 2010. He's been a part of the team since 1999 and got an MBA from the University of Miami. George Pitta is the CFO since 2014 and his past experience includes CFO of Perry Ellis and the Sunglass Hut. Currently, NASDAQ is the second largest Hispanic-owned company in the United States and has nearly 22,000 employees. Thank you for listening. I look forward to hearing your questions on the D2L discussion tab or during our live Q&A on Friday. Thank you.